Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Colosseum. So that's probably the biggest game mode that I love playing, Colosseum of Despair specifically. So I wanted to review um, what I do for these early levels and uh, give you guys some hints and see if that helps you climb a little bit more. First thing is managers. Managers are always very important, especially in every game mode. For Colosseum, I use Lucy and she is max superb, so she gives power and technique. Uh, plus 30 to every single player. I also have the purchased Santa Selena. So she, when she's max superb, gives an increased chance of Coliseum champions dropping by 10%, which is huge, especially if you're going to be climbing for top 10 and even now into top 50, since more than 50 people are able to clear uh, floor 55. And then I use Gerald for additional stats. Once again, he's max superb, so I get power and speed by 30. And then I switch out on my second manager um, between Sailor Eve and Sailor Selena. So Sailor Eve is power and speed by 30 when she's max superb, and Sailor Selena is power and technique. So early on when the reset first happens, you know, Sunday morning at 8 a.m. for me, I also equip um, Korean Eve. So that way I can get that additional um, uh, what you call it? BP consumption decrease by 12%. So I've got one superb in her. So she takes off basically one BP of the 10 because she is at 12%. The other last manager I have is Aaron. When he is max superb, he reduces BP consumption by 20%. So basically that is three BP reduced for every 10 BP that I would spend. So that adds up tremendously when you only have to spend seven BP on a Coliseum match versus that 10. That's how I can crank out so much. And then every you know hour and a half that resets and I can use uh, BP again, and then I can climb and you know keep going and get you know 60 or so every every couple hours. So 14, this is kind of my main formation that I use for one through, I think it's like 43 or something like that. So basically it's a one hit KO formation. Um, this is not it. <laughs> um, I use beta as my ace to increase my action speed, especially if you're looking for top 10, you have to clear the matches as quick as you can. So early on, you want to get around, you know, 36 seconds, 48 seconds, you know, a minute, maybe a minute 12 um, you can even get down to 24 seconds every once in a while. But basically, you know, the higher the score you get for the three players that matter, um, which are your top scores, are going to be multiplied by that time that you beat it in. So I use beta as my ace. Um, if you need more attack power, especially up um, later in the higher ones, you can switch over to like Kiki to increase that uh, pass effect. Um, you can switch over to Uriel to increase attack power. Um, you know, there's a, a few different options. But my striker is um, Char, so I use Sage as an additional 20% uh, attack power increase for all Ardor. I use Karel because he has a passive of increasing crit damage for the entire team. I use Didi for Spirit. Um, I have Linea to increase action speed for the line. Nerazel is my center mid passer who is holding ignition catalyst since I rerolled. And then Ascalad is my forward passer up to Baltheon to then active pass to Char and go from there. So that's kind of the formation for Spirit Stones. I have Yuri holding EBM. That's the main thing you need on her. Um, also, with that, the reason I use her is to increase attack power within the position and then pass effect by 35% and pass effect by 30. So she increases pass effect by 65% from Baltheon when he passes to Char. Baltheon then holds Silent Cold, so that increases that crit damage within the position, and he's got pass stones on him. Other stones that increase, you know, pass by 63, so he, he does really well with passing to Char. And then Char is built for full crit damage. So rerolled for Shard of Bomung to increase uh, crit damage and increase inflicted damage on the target. And then uh, Dribble Stone that just helps increase receiving pass effect and penetration power. So here is kind of a typical um, you know, spot. For these early ones, it really doesn't matter for me um, where I put that helper. I usually just you know choose one of them randomly. Later on, um, they do help for different long passes or speeding up the line. Um, or additional reflexes. So I'll get into helpers, you know, more later on. But this is kind of what I do for those first, you know, 40 so levels. Um, 
basically want to start with the ball. If you don't start with the ball, you can try stealing it and then active passing from, you know, Narazel up to Baltheon. You won't get as high of a score if you don't use Ascalod, but once again, you don't need to worry about that later on if you're mainly just trying to clear. So my Narazel, she is at 100 and 29 action speed. So depending on starting action bar, um, it's been 48 seconds or four ticks for her to now do an action. So I'm gonna steal. All of these lower people are pretty easy to one hit KO and then active pass to Baltheon. And because I have DD, I started with that extra, whatever it is, 60% spirit. So I can now get an active pass, active shot from Baltheon to Char. And that's just going to just increase that damage even more and make sure I get max score um, on this floor. So score is calculated by your top three players and the damage that they do. So there's different formulas for shoots versus steals versus passes and stuff like that. But um, basically, it adds up those three. It multiplies it by your time multiplier. You get an MVP bonus. It puts it all together, and, and that's your score. So we can go into that later, and there's tons of awesome articles on Reddit or the forums and stuff on on that but pretty much i'll go next match you know do this until i get a champion and then if i find a champion then i'll switch out my managers based on what champion that is but basically this is the formation that i use it's just a one hit ko formation i've got buffs and passive totems and stuff in the back line and goalkeeper just to boost um, damage and make sure i have you know one and a half a little over one and a half starting action bar so Narazel was even faster that time with that starting action bar. So this is 36 seconds that I'll clear this floor in, which is you know pretty much amazing. If you can clear in 36, 48 seconds, uh, that's really good, especially getting max score from these players. So you got to you know, figure out which ones you can use. I like that center mid active passer um, to a forward passer. Um, you can use Lin May is amazing for regenerating um, action bar and spirit, and that way you don't lose as much. You can use like a Sammy or Nyaros or you know any other forward passer to get it up to Baltheon. But Ascalot is the best because she recovers 100% action bar and you don't waste any more time now on Baltheon's active pass to Char. So I'll do another one just so you guys can see. So far I've um, not started with the ball on both of these, but I've been able to steal. You are gonna have to build up quite a bit of reflex for your center mid passer if you don't start with the ball, especially on the higher ones, if you're gonna try to steal and then active pass. But when you can start with it, oh, and this is amazing, this is 24 seconds. So this is probably the you know, fastest time that you'll see for this floor and the highest score um, for 24 seconds until they increase another totem or a better spirit stone substats or something if you could clear it in 12 seconds but 24 is pretty much amazing <laughs> so there we go active pass up active shoot and then you're done so i'll see if i can get a champion um that's the other thing that you know you need to bank on for higher scores and you have to grind champions and do resets in order to get higher scores, especially if you're competing for top 50 or even top 10, which is what I've been um, doing for the last couple months, or last several months, however long it's been. So with champions, um, you've got to, I, I usually grind up to about floor 45 or 46 or so the first day. And if I get really lucky, I'll have champions up to level 40, 45, um, sometimes even 50, depending on how lucky I am. But then I'll do the reset um, that Sunday night before Monday morning. And then when I wake up in the morning, I spend my BP, um, hopefully get a couple more champions, do that for, you know, the rest of the day, reset, you know, so on and so forth for those first couple days. Uh, my goal is to get up to about 110, 120 as the starting champion level once I start my actual run. So typically that's like Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday morning, sometimes Wednesday, just depends how long it takes to grind up to level 110 or so. Um, but then you're talking about, you know, 65 to 70,000 per champion match when you complete it. And that really adds up when you're getting, you know, 10, 12, you know, 13 or so champions on a, on a run. Okay, so the next champion match, um, I will change out one of my managers to make sure I have the highest stats in there. And then I will always look at what attribute it is to see who I'm going up against. So it's an Ardor shoe. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go back. I'll make sure I have my power and technique managers. 
This chat's getting annoying. I don't know who's in this, but I'll switch out. All right, so we will switch over and get uh, Sailor Selena in there to increase that power and technique. And perfect, so power and technique, power and speed, power and technique. And then I've got Aaron to still decrease my BP consumption. So I've already finished my run. I was at uh, 5.5 million, so that's why I'm already up to champ level 177. So I wouldn't be starting or <laughs> or playing on this one, but I'll, I'll do this real quick. Uh, just so you guys can see the, the building function. And I do have a YouTube video already on, um, I think it was champ level 202 to 224, whatever my highest one was, kind of goes through that uh, that process. But uh, recovering action bar is huge, healing is huge, decreasing damage is huge, especially on these, on these high ones. So this one is toughest because of the Elaine and Char. They, uh, as soon as Elaine procs are active, that Char does insane amounts of damage. Uh, the Erica, you can usually two shot. Um, depending on the 177, if I could get a Marin active and survive <laughs> long enough, I could probably one shot her, but uh, that may be pretty difficult. So let's switch over. I was just experimenting with the Mono Dark team. I'll show you my build for most champions. So I like Varister Ace. This is something I switched to recently with the changes. Um, it's basically having a Scylla Ace, but then it's a second long passer to go up for a shot. So Elaine Balshar is my typical front line. Um, and then Marin, Curel, and Askeladd in the mid. And then I'm already using a helper uh, Metatron. So I now need a forward passer up. And then I will use uh, Miho for that action bar spirit recovery. Uh, just double check, make sure I've got my right stones on them. EBM for Elaine, Silent Cold for Baltheon. And then Shar, I haven't changed in a while, so she's still Shard of Bulmung. Pray Sentence on Askeladd, EBM on Linmei. And then I don't think, yeah, I don't have a second. Uh, my second praise sentence is on Marin for the pass up to the midline, so that should be good. All right, so I put the Metatron in front of the opponent's striker. Just want to make sure that I am getting that action bar recovery and that healing for the line. And then, yes, I know, come on. Come on, Internet. All right, so Metatron in front of Char, and then Elaine. Okay, good. Okay, so I want to use Miho's active first. Um, typically on her, I'd have um, all action speed stuff because I want her to um, get the ball first and use her active. And then it'll be pass, pass, pass to Varister, forward pass, Elaine Balshar. And then when it comes back around, I'll get it from Lin May, forward pass up to Marin, and then Askeladd to Baltheon to Char. So that is kind of the... Uh, process of champion matches especially when you get pretty high and you can really use this formation too once you get past a level that you can't one hit ko with your striker this is a great one to use for building up um, and getting two shots on the goalie um, as well as surviving and having a zombie backline that can heal a lot so you still have to invest into quite a few players but once you do it is pretty easy to clear stuff up to about 52 with uh, this type of formation. And then 53 and 55 are a little bit different for me. A lot of people use Duke and just clear it that way, but I like to kill it with the striker and use Ravian. So I can go over that. So, all right, with these champions, especially early on, um, they're gonna be really powerful. So you'll see, I mean, she'll get an active off now with that. So at least I don't have to worry about it. But active without a pass. Oh, good. She didn't crit. So that was only 500 damage. That was great. So I'll attack into... I've got Lucian. So he generates um, action bar, spirit, and he heals the team every time he is attacked. So that's going to be great early on. Um, I did go below the 80% for my Varister ace, but Elaine hasn't procced her active. So I, I wasn't too worried about attacking into Nari at that point. And now I can use Miho's active heal up. He's now above that 80%. So I'm going to get Varister's ace from there. Then I'm going to pass all around. I want to get it back to Varister and I'm going to forward pass or long pass all the way up to Elaine. So that way I can use her active and then I will normal pass from Baltheon to Char as long as that Leah isn't too 
fast on me. So this is going to be close. I may have to active. I'll check out their action bar. So I should be fine because Mickey will go first, but my Baltheon is faster than her. So use the lanes active, normal pass, and then I will normal shoot with, oh, dang it, she was faster. All right, so that sucks. Now I can't get a second shot off, so I will have to rely on Ascalod to pass to Baltheon, but I should be fine. Uh, we'll just see how much action bar I've got to burn. Hopefully Sage just kills me. Dang it. Okay, so now I can't use Marin's, but I will normal pass. And now burning Ascalod's action bar because my Char is dead, so I don't want to use her active and pass up to Baltheon to then not do anything. So I'm just going to normal pass and sacrifice that. And then I'll just do some damage with Kurel. Basically just suicide because there's nothing I can do. I don't want to, you know, forward pass or long pass up and just burn that active. So now I'm just going to wait. And I will have to recover action bar from shots on Metatron and wait, you know, 15 minutes for <laughs> uh, Miho. So she's down to 13 minutes now for her active to come back and play. So that's good. You just got to watch action bar. So depending on who I pass to, Nari is going to be able to go first. Um, if I pass right to Miho, then she's going to get killed by the Nari. But, you know, it's not horrible. I don't want to attack too much and go below the 80%. And I don't mind um, their frontline stealing it and Char shooting again because every shot against the Metatron is just recovering my action bar for the team. And I've got to get... Okay, so now I've got Elaine's action or active. So this is going to be pretty painful every Char shot. So I've got to get this up and back to Ascalad pretty quickly, but co-op defense always helps. So <laughs> she's still not critting on me, which is awesome. Um, let's see. So Nari's back to 100. Okay, don't mind passing to Lin May because if she's not fast enough, Nari can attack in. Um, is she faster? Everybody's at zero. I'll go ahead and and risk it. So I'll forward pass up to Ascalad. Hopefully she can outrun that opponent's midline. I don't think Sage or... Yep. Good. Okay, so I'm only going to get one shot. But we'll see if I can one-hit KO. I didn't get Marin's active off. So basically 13,000 hit points on this wonderful Erica. We'll see what I can do. Hopefully we won't get a co-op defense. We got 50 a 5900 dribble. Okay, 16,000. So we were good. That's the nice thing about this Erica. You can do crazy amounts of damage to her. The hard part is just surviving the Char Elaine on that opponent's front line. So come on, Internet. You can do it. So there we go. 92,000 points off of this champion. Now, that would be amazing if you could start, you know, sometime I did start a run at 130 and 140 once, but then I got up to, you know, 170, 180. And if you get a Vanchi or a Serestia or something like that, that I'm just, I don't have teams built well for, then you lose and you sacrifice that score. So even though it's great getting 90,000 on, uh, on a champion match, if you lose a couple of them, you're not going to gain anything from starting too far. Uh, for going top 10. So obviously, if you can clear them and into the 200s, you're going to get an amazing score. But, you know, you just got to plug away and, and do it from there. So I know this is a really long video, but basically just wanted to go over my one hit KO formation for Coliseum. I did do one champion in there, so you can kind of see that other formation for what you can do above and beyond that. I'll try to uh, climb a little bit more, and then I'll show you guys some stuff from, you know, 40 beyond. But basically, that's the formation I use from 1 up to, like, you know, 43 or something like that. Is just uh, speed, active pass in the midline right to a forward passer that can then forward pass up to your striker. Active pass, active shoot. Didi helps generate spirit. I have a whirlwind center mid, so she already generates a lot of spirit alone on her active pass. Um, you could put Prey Sentence on somebody. I used to have Nari with um, Ignition Catalyst, and then I'd pass to a Prey Sentence passer to get it up. So just depends on how much damage you need to do. Obviously, EBM and Silent Cold are amazing uniques to have in the front line for that um, crit damage. And then it's just action speed from then on if you're going to try to climb in top 50 and top uh, 10 especially, is you've got to clear the matches as quick as possible, and you've got to do the maximum amount of damage with three players, mainly your striker, um, your front line um, passer, and then depending on which passer or penetrator you have, 
um, will be your last score for what the last action was that a player did. So if you guys have any questions on Coliseum, let me know. I'll go over uh, Coliseum part two video later on once I climb back up in the 40s, and I'll show you guys some more technique for uh, what I look at in clearing those levels. If you have any questions, let me know. You guys have a good day.